Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Solo React Talk. Tonight, I'm going to be reacting to Who is Zolani? Darken Law by Necrit. Uh, this is in connection with League of Legends. I've been advised that I should continue on with Necrit's uh, uh, YouTube video content, uh, you know, surrounding League of Legends. And, you know, I should focus on that instead of going for the cinematics, cinematic uh, reactions. So I'm going to put that on hold and then I'm going to continue on with Necrit and his um, uh, videos based on the League of Legends lore. Yeah. So tonight's episode, who is Zolani? Hopefully I'm pronouncing her name correctly or his name correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Dark and law. All right. Uh, if you want to check out the original video as well as uh, Necrit's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below. And yeah, let's start. Three, two, one, go. Well, originally, I wanted to release another MMO video today, but I'm having too much fun with that video, and so I'm delaying it. Instead, today we can talk about the community's favorite topic, the Darkin. We know that the champion after the Monster Hunter is going to be a Darkin, and I do expect that champion to push the lore of the Darkin a bit more forward. But thankfully, Legends of Runeterra got a whole new expansion that is themed around the Darkin. And there, from the lore of the cards, we learned a very crucial new information. And that's what today's video is about. We're gonna talk about the new main Darkin called Zolani, we'll talk about how she's connected to the already established lore, and we'll mention where this is heading. But um, The Darkin uh, are they're beings, they're ascended beings that uh, use blood magic, right? And they used to be warriors belonging to the Suriman Empire, but then, you know, they became corrupted because they were fighting against the Void. Uh, and void creatures and they corrupted them and uh, they could not be controlled by who was it again Narsus yes Narsus the wise uh, they couldn't be controlled by him anymore and he went into exile or hiding while the Darken had infightings and civil war civil wars against each other and they in those civil wars they developed their blood magic right um, I'm not entirely sure what does that entail. Like, you know, how how is it that they use blood magic? Like, do they draw blood from other creatures or from themselves? Or, yeah, or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But, you know, hopefully in this uh, video we'll be able to understand further about the Darkin and Zolani. Yeah. Before we start diving into this, for those of you who don't know or those of you who forgot, let's very quickly summarize who the Darkin even are. Simply said, when the Shreeman Empire rose to power, they started using the Sun Disk to reflect celestial magic into their soldiers, and by doing that they would turn them into the Ascended, also known as the Golden God Warriors. The Ascended were loyal to the Shreeman Emperor, but after they were sent to war with Ikathia, where they had to fight the mind-bending creatures of the Void, their mentality started breaking a bit. Unfortunately, that was followed by Zerath betraying Azir, killing him and essentially destroying the entire Empire. This left the Ascended without a leader. And since they were already going a little bit crazy, they all started turning against each other. On top of all of this, the Darkin started using blood magic to improve their own bodies, so that they would be stronger than the other ones. This really broke their minds. And yeah, I still want to know like how were they using blood magic? I mean, did they draw the blood from living beings or from magical beings or from themselves? You know, what does blood magic entail exactly? Yeah, because I'm thinking when I when he talks about blood magic, I'm thinking about Dragon Age, and their term and their uh, use of blood magic. You know, where they have to sacrifice other human beings, or not not even sacrifice, but you know, just to draw blood from a, a living creature or a human being, and you know, a mage 
is able to amplify their powers tenfold uh, from taking the bl uh, taking blood from a living creature. So I'm assuming it's something like that. You know, they're like vampires in a type of way where they would take blood from other living creatures and then it would make them stronger. I I'm thinking it's like that. I'm not sure. This is how the Darkin Wars were started, where the Darkin spread all around Runeterra and they simply started fighting for dominance. Later, in the Twilight of the God story, it was revealed that the Celestials realized that the Darkin were a threat to the mortal world, and so the aspect of Twilight came down, and using the Chalikar, which is Sivir's original blade, she absorbed the Darkin inside that weapon. Unfortunately, she didn't absorb all of them. And Wait, so all of the Darkins that's been absorbed, absorbed are in that one blade? Oh, that place must be crowded then. <laughs> because I thought, like, uh, this aspect taught, you know, the mortals on Runeterra how to seal away uh, all the Darkin in different types of weapons, not just one singular weapon, you know? Hmm. So, all the Darkin that managed to run away had to be sealed separately inside special weapons. So only those who were not absorbed by the aspect of Twilight were turned into the Darkin weapons. Now, throughout this entire story there was always a mystery. We never knew what was happening with the blood magic. We didn't even know where it came from. And that changes today. Because that is exactly what the new Darkin Zolani reveals. As a fun fact, Zolani was first mentioned in the Faceless God story. We can even see her in the story's art. This statue is a massive piece that is carved into a mountain. And in the latest cinematic you can actually see Talia destroy that statue to bury a void rift. And was Zolani like a famous uh, Darkin in her time when she was still around? Was she like very famous? Like did she have a city that she controlled where people would actually carve out a, a statue of her on the face of a mountain? Huh. Interesting. Anyway, the point of the Faceless God story is that some people delved underneath that place to figure out what this legendary Zolani looked like. Apparently, the face of that statue was destroyed by the most cruel of the Darkin, which would either be Rast or Aatrox. We are still not sure. But also, in that story, we learned that Zolani was a healer. And that is gonna be crucial for today. But super quickly, with the base story laid out, let me blitz through the other four Darkin revealed in these cards. First of all, there is the Darkin Ballista. The description of this card tells us that this is a massive Darkin weapon that was discovered underneath the territory of Noxus. Uh, how big are the Darkin? Because I can see this Ballista, right? I can see there's a human being right there. And he is puny compared to this... Uh, contraption so I'm now I'm asking myself how big were these people were, that, were they like super giants or something oh and we can see that after people pulled it up this darkin weapon actually came alive and it is revealed that this ballista is actually Naganeka of Zoretta those of you who have a great memory may remember Naganeka from the Twilight of the God story she was one of the Darkin who were present when the aspect of Twilight started devouring all the Darkin, and she is one of those who managed to escape. Her description says, Ancient muscles flexed once more. The warrior heard her general's call and knew where she was needed. South, in the lands she once known as Ikathia. Now I'm trying to imagine this aspect absorbing the Darkin into that uh, blade, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, like I'm thinking about Cell from Dragon Ball Z. You know how Cell uses his tail and then it opens up and then it, you know, takes a human being and then it sucks it up like that. So I'm just wondering like how did this uh, celestial aspect absorb these Darken, you know, into the blade? Like, <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm digressing, but I'm, I'm just thinking about this right now. Unfortunately, we are not sure who is that general. 
We know that a lot of the Ascended host was led by Nasus. But I'm not sure if Nasus would be the one calling all the Dark into words Ikathia. In fact, I don't know why anyone would be calling the Dark into words Ikathia. To fight the Voidborn? Maybe. But the Darkin are crazy, so they wouldn't really care about that. This is just a blind theory, but this might be teasing another Darkin to come in the future. And that would be Setaka. Setaka was an Ascended warrior who actually led the other Ascended. Wait a minute, Setaka the, the commander of the, of the Ascended uh, Suleiman. But didn't she die? I thought Nekrit said that she died in the first war on uh, when they were battling against Ikathia, you know, and when the void was at its height in Ikathia, that's when she sacrificed her life, you know, making sure that they defeated uh, the void in Ikathia. So how could she be still alive? Or is there some sort of way that she would still, you know, exist in some shape or form? Hmm. Okay. She was a general, so it would make sense if it was her. But she did die after she was consumed by the Void Beasts. So who knows, maybe Setaka comes back in the future with a voidy form. Maybe she would be luring them all to get devoured in Ikathia. Oh, okay, no, that's, that, that could possibly happen. Oh, that would be terrifying. But that's just a blind theory. Anyway, did you notice how she looks a little bit like a chicken? Even though in the Twilight of the Gods story she was described as a serpent-like Darkin? Chicken? Nah, man. Nekrit, do you know what a chicken looks like? <laughs> no. No, this does not look like a chicken at all. I mean, no. It looks like a... Okay, I don't actually know what it looks like, but not a chicken. No. Well, the theory goes that since the ballista was found near a farm, a chicken happened to touch the ballista, which was followed by Naganeka taking over its body. The other new Darkin comes from the Darkin Halberd. Straining against the confines of his cell, Tarosh heard his general's call. He would answer it, one way or another. Legend says Tarosh was mere moments from destroying Zolani, when the Darkin were set upon by the Dargonians. As centuries passed, he sensed the land around him become corrupted, tainted with rot and perpetual stench of death. How he dreamt of steeping Zolani in the same suffering once he had claimed his freedom. So yes, Tarosh is another Darkin. Yes, he did get the memo, but also you can see that he didn't really like Zolani. And you can see that he is referencing blood magic by mentioning that the land around him became corrupted, tainted with rot and perpetual stench of death. And this then takes us to the Darkin Lodestone. Perhaps those who imprisoned the Darkin thought that burying the legendary warrior Horazi within an orb of star metal would sufficiently dim her irascible will. But as her general stirred, so too did Horazi, who found that even Targon's ascended protectors could be tempted by promises whispered from afar. Okay, so this darkened lodestone is not necessarily a weapon. It looks it just looks like an idol of some sort, you know? But the consciousness of a darken is inside it. That's interesting. Okay. So they didn't only place them into weapons, they placed them into different trinkets um or or idols or something like that. And this is one of the uh, examples of that okay once again you can see that her general stirred so either they are all actually pointing towards zolani or setaka is actually somehow alive and then we actually get to see horazi herself horazi was gifted a high perspective in the burning celestial matter that imprisoned her she glimpsed the secrets of the cosmos and the infinite passage of time that preceded and followed her existence she learned so much, and yet her hatred towards the coward Zolani remained. Again, you can see that everyone hates Zolani. Yeah, they hate her with a passion. <laughs> with a passion. So let's learn about why that is. It all starts with Cain. Now, Cain in Legends of Runeterra is not fully canon, because of how the Shadow and the Darkin works here. 
Essentially, based on your gameplay, you can choose which storyline happens to Kane. He either gives in to the Darkin or he beats the Darkin and he becomes the Shadow Assassin. So both versions of his story are a what-if scenario. But the overall story arc still reveals what is going on with the Darkin. It starts with the Keeper of the Box. Now, despite them looking different, I assume this box is the same box we saw in the comic. Here it just looks more interesting. Essentially, the box reveals that there is another Darkin weapon in Ionia. This is later confirmed by the Shadowblade fanatic, who confirms it to Kane himself. In the darkness, he'd seen it. A weapon to cut through the shadows. And in that moment, he heard a voice call to him. Distant, but powerful. He followed it to Cain, the truth of its words guiding him. Fun fact, the Shadowblade fanatic might actually be Ren Shadowblade. The two look exactly the same, except the Shadowblade fanatic just fully gave in to the shadows. Okay, these people I don't know about. Um, Cain and, and, and this uh, Shadow Assassin person. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about these two people. Hmm. Huh. Anyway, following these leads, Kane arrives at the Vuju Blade Masters. In Master Yi's cards, you can see that Master Yi is trying to pass the Vuju onto other people. And one Hey, it's that lady. I saw her like in the beginning of the video. Okay. So how did you turn bad? Oh, is this Zolani? Yeah, I think this is Zolani. Maybe she's been hiding in this lady's body this whole time or it has been Zolani this whole time you know just covering herself up um, making herself blend into society uh, you know you know like how Narsus also went into exile so probably she's also in exile here wherever this place is hmm. one of them is Yun the prodigy and she is the key to the storyline in the Noxian Defector and the Ranger Knight Defector cards, you can see how Kane's group attacks the Blade Masters. And in one of the what if scenarios, you can see that Kane actually kills most of the Blade Masters, leaving only Master Yi and Yun alive. And this is where Yun's dark storyline is unleashed. First of all, there is the card Momentous Choice. Angry tears streamed down Yun's face as she surveyed the bodies littering the ground. She had failed them. She had failed her master. And now only one choice remained. This is followed by the Darkened Bloodletters, which are the Darkened weapons themselves. As the fighting raged on, Yun, desperate and badly wounded, turned to the voice whispering in her thoughts. You will never die, it said, soft as summer rain because I will never let you. Yee, that kind of sounds weird. <laughs> you will never die because I will never let you. Aye, that sounds a bit weird. <laughs> Don't touch those blades. And yeah, like there's a darken inside them. Don't touch those blades. You'll be cursed or something. Interestingly enough, you can hear the exact same whispers in the Heedless Resurrection card. But then Yun actually picks up the blades, and this is revealed in the utter devastation. As she took hold of the weapons, her humanity fled, and in its place a hateful essence filled the emptying vessel that was once the student Yun. This kind of reminds me of uh, World of Warcraft, uh, Prince Arthur's when he took uh, the blade Frostmoor. It, you know, it consumed his soul and then what was left was this body that uh, was now under the control of the blade, you know, and, you know, the, the rest of the, the, the armor or the helmet, I should say, uh, of the Lich King. So, yeah, this kind of reminds me of that. But it's quite interesting. And I like the design of the blades, though. It, it's very interesting. It's like a crescent moon but very strangely done. Huh. So she took the blades out of desperation. She saw no choice. And, you know, the blades were telling her sweet things, telling her she won't die because I won't let you. That's a trap, lady. <laughs> That's a trap. It washed through her, over her, around her, 
and out into the world, stirring the slumbering Darkin. And after that, you can see that Zolani took over Yun's body. And this card explains everything. Shurima's Ascended were doomed the moment they took up arms against the Void. This was an enemy that could never be beaten. And while the God Warriors were all but guaranteed immortality, their minds were never as resilient. Madness consumed them all. Zolani, once a beloved and gifted healer, began using her hemomantic powers to control her brethren. And soon enough, the hatred between her and Aatrox boiled over into civil war. So you can see that the Darkin Wars began because Zolani gave blood magic to the Darkin, but she was actually using it to control them all. Because the only way to secure peace among the rampaging Darkin was to control them all. And it was also confirmed that yes, the one who destroyed her statue was Aatrox. In the other devastation you can see that it mentions how Zolani stirred, which was also referenced by one of the other Darkin. So I wonder if Zolani was actually the general that everyone is talking about. And therefore... Uh, but was she a general in the ascended uh, Suleiman army? Was she a general? I mean, if she was, then she would have been highlighted with the rest of them, like Narsus and... Uh, how do I pronounce her name again? Sa 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 Sadeka? Yes. <laughs> her, you know who I'm talking about. You know, why wasn't she named as well? You know, as being one of the important leaders of that uh, golden army. Yeah. Or they all gathered because they just want to kill Zolani. But I don't think that's the case because this is not happening in Ikathia. And Naganeka mentioned that she was heading towards Ikathia. So the general is still a mysterious person to us. But at least Zolani revealed a really cool piece of the Darkin history. She revealed that she was the cause of the Darkin Wars. And she is the one who came up with Hemomancy. But as to where her blades are now, we are not really sure. Yes, Legends of Runeterra Aren't they with June? ...is built upon canon lore. But until we get a story in the core universe that would confirm things from Legends of Runeterra, the cards are not necessarily considered as fully canon. So really what we should accept from this is that Zolani's blades are likely somewhere in Ionia. In the future, Kane will probably be interested in getting them, and so will Rast. Speaking of which, why don't we have a look at how Rast reacts when he picks up Zolani's blades. Rast let out a triumphant howl. Years of waiting, yearning and now he was finally free. He lifted Zolani's blades and put them to his tongue, savoring the taste of fresh blood. He closed his eyes in bliss and a smile crept across his face for the first time in millennia. The reaping had begun. Connected to this, we can also mention one final thing. Rast actually had a friend, and that is the Forsaken Bakai. The little description mentions how both of them had their Ritual of Ascension at the same time. But as Rast became an Ascended, his friend was deemed unworthy and he became a Bakai. So it's interesting to see how all of the places are interconnected. Anyway, that is it for this video. I'm just glad we get to talk about the Darkin again, because I wonder if this is all going to be connected to the new champion. Maybe the new champion is going to be the general, or maybe this is actually talking about Nasus and I'm just making up really weird theories. Or maybe I actually missed a piece of the story. I hope I'm not wrong here. That is entirely possible, there is a lot of lore around the Darkin. But one thing is certain, if it wasn't for Zolani, if she actually let the Targonian Celestials deal with all the Darkin, everything would be fine. But more than that, if the new champion is actually a dog, it's gonna be amazing if it becomes the general of the Darkin. <laughs>
Okay, guys, that's it uh, with Who is Zalani, Darken, Law by Necrit. Um, yes, so she is the creator of uh, Blood Magic. However, it seems to me that, you know, the Ascended Warriors, uh, the Golden Warriors, uh, they were humanoid in the beginning, right? And then once they finally started using blood magic they became these kind of like monstrous creatures uh, with horns and some of them with six arms or four arms you know they just looked more animalistic and also in different types of ways just like that ballista uh, that you know was actually a living darken that transformed itself into some sort of chicken you know that's what necrit says it's he says it looks like a chicken so i'll just take it under his advisement <laughs> but to me it didn't look like a chicken but anyways um yeah so you know the darken transformed themselves into these uh creatures they weren't really looking humanoid anymore um, i'm not sure whether that is due to black magic itself or is it due to something else entirely i'm not entirely sure um but yeah zalani I'm just wondering is her soul still trapped in the blades or is her soul now in june you know uh the prodigy um i'm just wondering about that uh and what happened to june's soul is it like gone completely will it ever come back is there any way for it to come back uh so that you know she can regain her body once more or is she forever lost and you know Zalani has now complete has complete control over the body and you know uh, she can do whatever she wants with it i'm just wondering about that and these weapons you know that the darken are trapped inside why why is it that they these weapons are not destroyed you know why aren't they like sent into some sort of i don't know, like fire uh, or, or a or a lava pit something <laughs> just throw them all inside there and let them be destroyed you know i mean keeping them in these blades is like a stopgap solution because it seems to me that the darken can still communicate uh with mortals uh, uh who are in close proximity with these weapons just like how zalani was communicating with uh june the prodigy so why why isn't the further initiative in destroying these weapons yeah because i can see that containing them in in these weapons is just not enough really um but yeah this was interesting this was very interesting there are still some characters here that i don't know anything about like kane i don't know who he is um and i can see that it he's pathway is determined by you guys the players you know you decide whether he, he should take this path or that path so his path is not really clear in law um you know it's all up to you guys how you you know decide how his path uh continues and yeah there was also some other characters also like the champion i don't know who the champion is not sure is the champion you guys the player or is it someone else yeah, I'm not sure about that either. Um, but yeah, uh, new characters that I need to look on. Hopefully, Necret has got some YouTube videos based on, you know, Kane and all the other people that I don't know about. And I guess we'll just see each other next week, Wednesday, uh, with another installment from Necret's YouTube channel. Until then, guys, remember that if you want to check out the original video as well as Necret's YouTube channel, the links are in the description below if you like my reaction please give me a like comment and subscribe to my channel click on the notification bell if you want to be up to date with my latest videos and i will see you guys next week wednesday good night